Dear students, I welcome you all for our lecture series on food science and technology. In today's lecture, let's make an attempt to know about introduction to food and nutrition. Every day, several times, we make food choices that influence our body's health. These choices may benefit or harm our health and over a long period, the results become important. A proper diet is essential from the very early stages of life for proper growth, development and to remain active. Food consumption, which largely depends on production and distribution, determines the health and nutritional status of the population. The following aspects will be studied under Introduction to Food and Nutrition. 1. Basic terms used in the study of food and nutrition. 2. Nutrients. 3. Food groups and functions of food. 4. Dietary reference intakes. 5. Relationship between food, nutrition and health. And 6. BMI and nutritional status. Let's start with our first topic, basic terms used in the study of food and nutrition. So the first word is health. Health is defined by the World Health Organization as the state of complete physical, social and mental well-being and not merely the absence of any disease and infirmity. The essential requirements of health include the following. Optimal growth and development, maintenance of structural integrity and functional capacity of the body, ability to withstand the process of aging with minimal loss of ability, ability to fight diseases as shown by resisting infections, preventing the onset of degenerative diseases and resisting the effect of environmental pollutants and toxins. Foods. Now, foods are products derived from plants or animals that can be taken into the body to yield energy and nutrients for the maintenance of life and the growth and repair of tissues. The next word is nutrition. Nutrition is derived from the Latin word nutrir, meaning feed or nourish, and is a science of foods, the nutrients and other substances they contain and their actions within the body as well as social, economic, cultural and psychological associations of food and eating. Nutrients. Now, nutrients are chemical substances obtained from food and used in the body to provide energy, structural materials and regulating agents to support growth, maintenance and repair of the body's tissues. Nutrient requirements. Nutrient requirements are defined as the minimum amount of the absorbed nutrient necessary for normal physiological functioning of the body. Nutritional status. Nutritional status is the health status of an individual as affected by the intake and level of nutrients and the ability of those nutrients to maintain normal metabolism. Malnutrition. Malnutrition means an undesirable kind of nutrition leading to ill health. It results from a lack, excess or imbalance of nutrients in the diet. It includes undernutrition and overnutrition. Undernutrition is a state of an insufficient supply of essential nutrients and overnutrition refers to an excessive intake of one or more nutrients. Phytochemicals Non-nutrient compounds found in plant derived foods that have biological activity in the body. Foods with such phytochemicals providing benefits to health are called as functional foods. Balanced diet A diet which contains different types of foods in quantities enough to meet the need for nutrients as well as a small provision to meet the nutrients during a short duration of starvation. The daily diet must provide all essential nutrients in the required amounts which vary with age, gender, physiological status 
and physical activity. A typical Indian balanced diet should provide 60 to 70 percent of energy from carbohydrates, 10 to 12 percent from protein and 20 to 25 percent of energy from fat. The features of a balanced diet are it meets nutritional requirements, develops maximum cognitive ability, prevents degenerative diseases, improves longevity, improves immunity, helps in coping up stress. The second topic is nutrients. Broadly, the nutrients are classified based on the amount required as macronutrients and micronutrients. Carbohydrates, fat and protein are called macronutrients because the body requires them in relatively large amounts, many grams daily. In contrast, vitamins and minerals are micronutrients required only in small amounts, that is milligrams or micrograms daily. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are either simple or complex and are major sources of energy. They provide energy of 4 kilocals per gram. The simple carbohydrates, glucose and fructose are found in fruits, vegetables and honey. Sucrose is found in sugar and lactose in milk, while the complex polysaccharides are starches in cereals, millets, pulses and root vegetables, as well as glycogen in animal foods. The other complex carbohydrates which are resistant to digestion in the human digestive tract are cellulose which is found in vegetables and whole grains, gums and pectin in vegetables, fruits and cereals which are called as the dietary fiber. Proteins. Proteins are complex molecules composed of different amino acids. Certain amino acids which are termed essential have to be obtained from proteins in the diet since they are not synthesized in the human body. Other non-essential amino acids can be synthesized in the body to build proteins. Proteins perform a wide range of functions and also provide energy of about 4 kilocalorie per gram. Protein requirements vary with age, physiological status and stress and more protein is required during growth, pregnancy, lactation, infection and illness. Animal foods like milk, meat, fish and eggs and plant foods such as pulses and legumes are rich sources of proteins. Animal proteins are of high quality as they provide all the essential amino acids in right proportions while plant or vegetable proteins are not of the same quality because of their low content of some of the essential amino acids. However, a right combination of cereals, millets and pulses provides most of the amino acids. Fat. Fats are a concentrated source of energy providing 9 kilocalorie per gram and are made up of fatty acids in different proportions. Dietary fats are derived from two sources which are the invisible fat present in plant and animal foods and the visible or added fats and oils also known as cooking oil. Fats also serve as a vehicle for fat soluble vitamins like vitamins A, D, E and K. It is necessary to have adequate and good quality fat in the diet for meeting the requirements of essential fatty acids. Diets should include adequate amounts of fat particularly in the case of infants and children to provide concentrated energy since their energy needs are more compared to adults. Adults need to be cautioned to restrict intake of saturated fat, examples are butter, ghee and hydrogenated fats and cholesterol which is found in red meat, eggs and organ meat. Excess of these substances could lead to obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease 
and cancer. Vitamins and minerals. So, vitamins are chemical compounds required by the body in small amounts. They must be present in the diet as they cannot be synthesized in the body. Vitamins are essential for numerous body processes and for maintenance of the structure of skin, bone, nerves, eye, brain, blood and mucous membranes. They are either fat soluble or water soluble. Vitamins A, D, E and K are fat soluble while vitamin C and the B complex vitamins such as thiamine, B1, riboflavin, B2, niacin, B3, pyridoxin, B6, folic acid, B9 and cyanocobalamin, B12 are water soluble in nature. Fat soluble vitamins can be stored in the body while water soluble vitamins are not and get easily excreted in the urine. Minerals. Minerals are inorganic elements found in the body, fluids and tissues. The important macro minerals are sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium and sulphur while zinc, copper, selenium, molybdenum, fluorine, cobalt, chromium and iodine are micro minerals. Minerals are required for maintenance and integrity of skin, hair, nails, blood and soft tissues. They also govern nerve cell transmission, acid base and fluid balance, enzyme and hormone activity as well as the blood clotting processes. Water. Water is a crucial element that provides the environment in which nearly all the body's activities are conducted. Several foods and large proportion of the human body is made up of water. It participates in many metabolic reactions and supplies the medium for transporting vital materials to cells and carrying waste products away from them. And the next topic is food groups and functions of food. The balanced diet as defined earlier can be achieved through a proper blend of foods from the basic five food groups. The five food groups plan based on the nutrient content and biological classification helps to plan menu which helps to achieve proper nutrient intakes. The five food groups are as follows. Food group 1, cereal grains and products. This includes foods like rice, wheat, ragi, bajra, maize, jowar, barley, rice flakes, wheat flour, oats, etc. And the main nutrients provided are energy, protein, invisible fat, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, folic acid, iron and fiber. The next food group is pulses and legumes. This includes foods such as Bengal gram, black gram, green gram, red gram, lentils, whole as well as the dals, cowpea, peas, rajma, soya beans, etc. The main nutrients provided are energy, protein, invisible fat, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, folic acid, calcium, iron and fiber. The next food group is milk and meat products which includes foods such as milk, curd, skim milk, cheese, paneer and meat products include chicken, liver, fish, egg and meat. The main nutrients provided are protein, fat, vitamin B2, vitamin B12, calcium and phosphorus. The next food group is fruits and vegetables. Fruits include mango, guava, ripe tomato, papaya, orange, sweet lime, watermelon, etc. Vegetables include greens such as amaranth, spinach, drumstick leaves, coriander leaves, mustard leaves, fenugreek leaves and other vegetables such as carrots, brinjal, ladies fingers, capsicum, beans, onion, drumstick, cauliflower, etc. 
The main nutrients provided are vitamin C, fiber, invisible fats, carotenoids, vitamin B2, folic acid, calcium, iron, fiber and a variety of phytochemicals. The next food groups are fat and sugar, butter, ghee, hydrogenated oils, cooking oils like groundnut, mustard, coconut, sunflower, palm oil, etc. come under fats and sugar, jaggery under sugars. So, the major nutrients provided are energy and fats. Foods are also classified according to their functions in the body into the following groups. The first group is energy yielding foods. Foods rich in carbohydrates and fats are called energy yielding foods. They provide energy to the body processes essential for continuance of life, to carry out various activities and to convert food which we eat into nutrients in the body. Cereals, roots and tubers, dried fruits, oils, butter and ghee are all good sources of energy. The next group is body building foods. Foods rich in protein are called body building foods. These foods help to maintain life and promote growth. They also supply energy. Milk, meat, eggs and fish are rich in proteins of high quality. Pulses and nuts are good sources of protein but the protein is not of high quality. The next group is protective and regulatory foods. Foods rich in protein, minerals and vitamins are known as protective and regulatory foods. They are essential for health and regulate activities such as maintenance of body temperature, muscle contraction, control of water balance, clotting of blood, removal of waste products from the body to maintain heartbeat. Milk, egg, liver, fruits and vegetables are protective foods. Food also has other functions such as social functions. Food has always been the central part of our community, social, cultural and religious life. It has been an expression of love, friendship and happiness at religious, social and family get togethers. The next function is psychological functions. In addition to satisfying physical and social needs, foods also satisfy certain emotional needs of human beings. These include a sense of security, love and acceptance. For example, preparation of delicious foods for family members is a token of love and affection. The next topic is dietary reference intakes. The results of research studies in the field of nutrition are used by scientists or researchers to derive standards. These standards explain the amounts of individual nutrients required by healthy individuals of all age groups for supporting health. Such standards are collectively called as dietary reference index, which is an umbrella term for the following individual values. So, the first value is estimated average requirement or EAR. The estimated nutrient requirement that is adequate in 50 percent of the population studied is known as EAR and is used to develop the recommended dietary allowances. Now, let us see recommended dietary allowances or RDA. They are estimates of nutrients to be consumed daily to ensure the requirements of all individuals in a given population. RDA is adequate for 97 to 98 percentage of the healthy population and there are separate values for physiological groups such as infants, preschoolers, children, adolescents, pregnant women, lactating mothers and adult men and women taking into account their physical activity also. RDA also includes a margin of safety to cover variation between individuals, dietary traditions 
and practices. The next unit is adequate intake or AI. For some nutrients, there is insufficient knowledge to determine an estimated average requirement, which in turn is needed to set an RDA. In these cases, an adequate intake is used, which reflects the average amount of a nutrient that a group of healthy people consume. The next unit is tolerable upper intake levels or UL. It is the maximum intake of a nutrient that is not associated with adverse side effects in most individuals of the healthy population. Overall, these recommendations apply to healthy people and may not be appropriate for people with diseases who have altered nutrient needs. Care should be taken to consider country specific recommendations while deciding the nutrient requirements. We will move on to the next topic which is relationship between food, nutrition and health. Diet has always played a vital role in supporting health. Good nutrition impacts greatly on the general well-being of people. Food choices influence the health and well-being of individuals. Malnutrition occurs when there is an imbalance in nutrients consumed and utilized. Poor nutrition can have an effect on energy levels, alertness, mobility, steadiness and healing. Nutrition imbalance can be either general that is due to excess or deficient amount of food of any one or all types leading to obesity, protein energy malnutrition etc or it can be specific that is excess or deficiency of a single nutrient that may arise due to faulty food habits or an underlying disease. Example, vitamin C deficiency, iron deficiency, anemia, etc. The health consequences depend on the nutrient and the severity of the imbalance. Undernutrition is a state of nutrient deficiency due to insufficient food intake. It usually affects the balance of all the nutrients in the body. Poor diets when combined with poor health can lead to serious health and nutritional problems such as decreased immunity, frequent infections, hormonal changes, diminished fat free mass, decreased work efficiency, poor growth in children, increased expenses for medical care and overall decreased quality of life. Now let us see what overnutrition means. Overnutrition is the opposite of undernutrition and occurs due to frequent or habitual consumption of nutrients by eating too much food to the level that it becomes dangerous to health. Although most nutrients can be harmful in excess, the danger of overnutrition relates to carbohydrates and fats. Obesity is an extreme form of overnutrition resulting from an accumulation of excessive amounts of body fat. Obesity increases the risk of chronic diseases including type 2 diabetes, hypertension or high blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, cancer, joint problems, liver problems, difficulty in breathing and decreased mobility. The health consequences of these conditions range from premature death to disabilities. Thus, with proper food choices leading to a good nutrition can have the following benefits. 1. Promotion of optimal growth and development of children. 2. Reduced risk of developing chronic diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, iron deficiency and dental caries or cavities and 3. Obtaining a healthy and productive life. Now we will move on to the last topic BMI and nutritional status. Body mass index abbreviated as BMI formerly called the Quetelet index is a measure for indicating 
nutritional status in adults. It is one of the measures used to assess nutritional status of an individual and helps to identify malnutrition. BMI is also recommended for use in children and adolescents. In children, BMI is calculated as for adults and then compared with Z scores or percentiles. Now BMI, let us see the definition. It is defined as a person's weight in kilograms divided by the square of the person's height in meters which is kg divided by meter square. For example, an adult man who weighs 70 kg and whose height is 1.75 meters will have a BMI of 22.9 that is 70 kgs divided by 1.752 into 1.752 which will give a value of 22.9 kg per meter square. The BMI ranges are based on the effect of excessive body fat causing disease and death. BMI was developed as an indicator of risk of developing diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, high blood pressure, osteoarthritis, some cancers and diabetes because as BMI increases, the chance of developing above mentioned diseases also increases. Thus, the WHO or the World Health Organization has provided the following criteria for assessment of nutritional status based on BMI. A BMI below 18.5 kg per meter square is termed as underweight. BMI between 18.5 to 24.9 kg per meter square it is considered as normal weight. A BMI between 25 to 29.9 kg per meter square is considered as pre-obese. BMI between 30 to 34.9 is considered as obesity grade 1. A BMI between 35 to 39.9 is considered as obese class 2 and BMI above 40 is considered as obese class 3. Thus, the conclusion is nutrition is a basic human need and a prerequisite to a healthy life. Foods provide nutrients the substances that support the growth, maintenance and repair of the body's tissues. A proper diet is essential right from the womb to every stage of life to attain a good growth, development and to remain active. Individual food choices influence health both positively and negatively. A proper balance of food selected over time can make an important contribution to the health of an individual. Thank you.